please welcome Laura Romero. Please let me know if um, my voice diminishes and you're not hearing it. Okay, thanks. Just signal me. Alrighty, so I'm so glad to be here with you today. And I am very grateful for Stephen Blue for all the work he does to maintain the Eugenia Poetry uh, Foundation and keep us going, keep us committed and uh, enjoying each other's. Um, efforts and love of the spoken and uh, written. Um, also thanks to Barnes & Noble, of course. So, the very long title of my book is Breathing Spirit, Prayers for the Emotional and Frequently Frantic but Often Grateful. The purpose for my book is to affirm that every single emotion that we feel can be a vehicle for spirit and spirituality. Writing began as a collection of scribbled notes in the middle of the night when I couldn't sleep due to disturbing circumstances in my life. Some of you might know about that. Uh, waking up in the middle of the night, I'm talking about. When I decided to share them, I titled each of them with the emotion that instigated my need to reach out to the creative power that's larger than I am. And. Um, I know it is a uh, tradition here with this group to applaud after each poem, but since I consider my whole presentation one unit of connected prayer poems, I would um, ask, would you please hold your response till the very end? Thanks. Desire for Source. Eternal Yes. What are you, or are you a who? I may never know, but my innermost places and spaces desire your yesness. Every heartbeat, every thought, every dying cell, every new cell calls out your indwelling yes. Every disintegration that happens in this world and worlds beyond, from old matter into new matter, evolving energy exhibits your powerful yes. <clears throat> Galaxies proclaim your ongoing yes, even the illusory emptiness of black matter reveals its yes. Yes, cry out the atoms. Yes, respond the molecules. Yes, sing sperm and egg cells. Egg, <laughs> egg cells, <laughs> not shells. Yes, shout the greens, the blues, the ecstatic dancing whites, the soil and air, the fire and ice. Our natural world hums yes. Deep inside, I identify with yes. What and who are you? Yes. Next one is shock. Speechless. That's how I feel today. Empty of words, full of impotent helplessness. Even afraid to fear the future, comfortable, perhaps, in my numbness? I dare not go there. Let's leave it at this. I'm speechless, but not alone. I feel your silent companionship. I feel you waiting here with me. I am not alone. I am strangely comforted in our silence together. Thank you. You are almost causing me to smile, but no. And no words yet. Today we will be like old friends, alone together, and silent together. Shock and trauma. It's been a while since the shock, but my body seems still frozen in its refusal to take it all in. I thought you were my eternal yes. Does that mean today I must acknowledge, yes, evil happens? Yes, trauma exists? Yes, shock takes time to leave the body? My soul is in contortions, in my mind's eye. My shoulders are hunched. My limbs are akimbo, unbalanced. My fingers like claws. I have assumed all that hurt, and now its byproduct is a body akin to cold, hardened lava. <coughs> Attend to me, spirit. Fix me beneath your gaze. Bounce life-giving light around me and through me and shine into my darkened spaces. 
incinerate my self-willed strength under your superior rays, break up my resistance until I am nothing but soul-filled molecules. I am available to you now. Soften me. Wash me as a wave laps the sand. Move me gently in the cool waters of your compassionate love. Your intentional life crosses my temporary boundaries, and I feel as if I can only burst and dissolve. Dissolve into you. I am free. I am me again in you. I feel safe again in you. My being in you, your being in me, is ultimate safety. My yes. I knew I was never meant to carry that burden. Until next time, all my gratitude, lover of my soul. And then came anger. Anger. It has its place, doesn't it? It demands I speak out. It stirs me to action against wrong, against ignorance, against hate. Or am I speaking for rather than against? For thoughtfulness, for love, for justice. Guide me, spirit. Guide me, awesome light. Keep me in your narrow path. Speed me past temptations to sin by allowing my own judgments to rule me. Speed me past those hasty judgments, judgments lacking sufficient light. Keep me moving forward and remind me not to replay and rehearse my anger. Slow me down only when I arrive at the place of hearing your almost silent but quietly whispering inner direction which I can depend upon for guidance. Guide me to my next word, my next action, my next thought, opening to my next emotion. I confess that sometimes anger is a thrill and sometimes it is ugly, but sometimes anger is a small gathering around a fire that craves truth, truth to feed it, color it, energize it, and give heart to its necessary right action, which allows resolution back to calm. Help me to feel anger in all its phases. Help me to recognize the forward tilt of my emotion. Am I drawn to my justice or your justice? Yours is the true light that never extinguishes. Yours the purifying white heat that will do us no harm. I am thankful for your company in the ride of my emotions. Guide me today. Distress. I lean back on the pillow and rest my head on the wall behind me. The irregular pulse in my neck, kabump. The tightened jaw, drop it. The tongue pasted to the roof of my mouth, let it drop. Breathe. Again, deeply. It's obvious I'm stressed, duh. Let me remember you and take you in. I want, need, crave your stillness, your regularity and rhythm of life, your reassuring here-ness. Hello? You are here, with me, in me, around me. Now I feel you again. I am reminded, a few breaths away from my circular thoughts and revolving emotions, I remember you and am calmed. I can find you within me. When seemingly in insane events surround me, when troubling fears and judgments arise, I find you within, you, you, my eternal one, my life's event that outshines, outlives, outweights all others, you. And then, um, some of us sometimes have bad dreams. This is dream anxiety. Author of energy, emotion, and dreams, I need your help. The gift of sleep I was blessed with last night certainly felt like a mixed blessing. A missed blessing? I learned what I already knew. I'm worried, and my dreams tell me very distinctly that sleep is not necessarily a refuge. I am struggling against things I pe feel powerless to change. My waking efforts to improve situations appear as frustrating roadblocks in the most vivid dreams. Enough words. I've been here before. May my rest be restorative. 
rejuvenating as a warm rain shower on a lazy afternoon, calming as the lightest blanket of snow in early evening. May my limbs be loose, my breathing soft, slow and full. I envision myself lying down in your relaxed lap, your reassuring touch on my crown, your protective presence containing my soul's energy. My unconsciousness, your artist's canvas. My dreams, a conduit for your inherent goodness. Waking or sleeping, I am at your mercy. How thankful I am for you, my deepest rest. Hope, relief, with an answered prayer, a glimmer of hope has arrived. A longing finally has resolution in its sights, a hint that needs might be met with your goodness. I imagine a bucket of clear water filled to the brim, potentially life-giving, potentially burden-relieving, potentially nourishing my thirsty soul and weary heart. This new hope energizes. May I rebound with renewed faith, faith to respond with grace and balance, faith to recognize the moments I am called to be a conduit of your love. A glimmer of hope has appeared. Thank you. The next one is loneliness and disconnection. <coughs> Sometimes we feel like we're just all alone, but we're really not, so just don't go there. I ask for and accept your assurance that I am loved, lovable, and loving, that I am important to the web of human life, that I have value and need to be here. You understand my insecurities even when I do not. I ask for and accept your relaxation, your filling your luminous loving life that is flowing through me even now. I will let me be me, and I will let it be. I bow in gratefulness to you, heart of my heart. Need for faith. <clears throat> I do not understand, but I know you are with us. I understand that fear and hate and all manner of darkness are here as well. Yet you have demonstrated your light to be more powerful. The light of life and love keeps returning. Help me to keep faith by recalling that when I slow down and look for you, I feel your presence. I feel your strong energy and unearthly peace, even when all around the world seems unhinged. You have been with our ancestors and are with our descendants all beings, all creation. Let us pause to feel you in our bones and muscles, in our pulsing blood and neurons, in each spark that carries your life along inside, outside, through these temporary vessels, in the inspiration of each breath that creation breathes, hidden in each idea. Let us know you as a presence, a holy and incomprehensible power. Need for strength. Strength. I need it, but what is it? Why does the word balance come to mind? And then resilience and adaptability? Then devotion, focus, single-mindedness? But I thought it had to do with firmness. Control? Immovability? No, those words conjure a vision of a brick wall, and immediately that wall appears broken, crumbling <clears throat> under its own weight with stress fractures, missing pieces, holes. So, is strength focused but adaptable, according to the need of the moment? Now natural elements of your world appear. Eagle's wings, elephant's, mus elephant's muscles, water. Water, one of the strongest forces I can imagine. And then there is light. Focus light is strong. I guess when I think I need strength, what I truly want is energy. Powerful, energized movement toward a goal, toward a goal, but ready to change direction at your prompting, which calls for sensitivity? Are you kidding me? 
Now I see monarch butterflies that flying thousands of miles in any kind of weather to reach their distant goal. Yes, give me your finely calibrated strength, source of life and light, your creative power moving me toward more fulfilling life. So far, I have few answers, but I have many clues. I experience true strength only in your miraculous style. In spite of my fragility, or perhaps because of it, I am willing. Your mysterious and indescribable strength, that's what I need. I discovered uh, Yoga Nidra, uh, sometimes called Restoration Yoga, a wonderful tool for dealing with PTSD. Yoga Nidra. I use it several times a week. <laughs> uh, recommend it. Tension and despair. I give up, Source. I give up my sunken stance and bowed head. To you, I lift my face. Close the eyelids and focus on inner light that is always there between my eyes. I feel the difference already. With my attention on you, the racket in my brain disappears. I give up clenching my jaw. I give up me, my despairing rounded shoulders and this seemingly endless fatigue. A relaxed rib cage opens in my mind's eye. I breathe you and I am lifted. I give up the fear in my gut, and I know you're cleansing clarity. I give up my tightly guarded contractedness, and my mental stance expands. Balance is enhanced. Energy streams through me toward newly useful feet, all the way down to my toes. Yet I feel lifted as if in air, ready to effortlessly flow with you. Having given you my body, you have rushed in and filled my soul. There are no horizons in this bright, clear atmosphere. I can open my eyes now to the tasks of this day and enjoy the ride of my life. The last prayer I'm going to read um, before uh, we switch speakers was the very last of the 60 prayer poems in this book. I finally, after a couple of years, was able to write forgiving. It means a lot to me, therefore. It's been a long time coming to this opening in my heart. I wish what happened never had, but those events did happen to me, and those events have been a part of me. Bodily memories that I fought with righteous anger and cold, bitter thoughts. Thoughts that energized my resistance, driven proactive steps, and at times demanded the agility of a martial arts warrior. All good, but, but nothing I have done or could ever do could cause what happened to disappear. Time has moved on. Blessedly, time has moved on. And now it is time. I can feel it. Now it is time to forgive, forgive, and forgive again. Time to wrap those memories up and store them securely away in a small, safe corner. There is so very much space in my life for good. The room is full of light, actually. So much space for happiness and laughter, new beginnings, and love. Each moment I am present heals my heart for that moment. Now is the time to remain comfortably quiet. My heart has begun, my, begun its healing. Yes, it has. And now is the time to allow my mind its well-deserved rest. Rest. Now is the time I can breathe energy in, smile genuinely, look forward to the future, realize safety, and realize and feel forgiveness. Thank you, Awesome Source, for these gifts of light and new life.
you so much, Laura. Let's give Laura another hand. everybody to hold their applause till the end because listening to you read the whole experience really felt very much like a meditation. It's very uh, refreshing and uh, serene. So thank you.